here we are on our way to Nepal. And in, in many ways, this is going back to the, the beginning, the, the very initial journey when I, was, when I was a child. I sort of ran off as sort of a child. And I was actually sort of a young adult, a late teenager. I sort of ran away at the age of 17 to Tibet. And I ran away from many, many things. And sort of ironically, it's almost 30 years later, I'm, I'm back again in the Himalayas. It's, I feel very much it's my spiritual home. I have a very sort of deep uh, uh, empathy and connection with the Himalayan culture and with essentially Tibetans. And although on this journey we're on our way to uh, the valley of Mustang and the, the, the kingdom of Lo, Lo Muntang, uh, it is very much Tibet. It's probably one of the last sort of intrinsic parts of Tibet still in the Himalayas. It's a sort of fant fascinating kingdom which I'd never actually been to before and I sort of desperately wanted to go for about 20 years. That's up until about, I think it was like 15 years ago, it was sort of cut off from the outside world, and it slowly started opening up. And, and because of its isolation, you know, the, the authenticity of Tibetan culture is, is, is still there. And you know, there were sort of moments, I sort of remember walking into the monasteries, and that feeling of connection as a child when I sort of ran away from my boarding school, for whatever reason. And here I am, sort of 30 years later, sort of, you know, dancing with, with the monks. I feel so close to them. I feel so, I feel so rich when I'm there. I do everything to sort of join in. And I know I'm not a child anymore, but they sort of bring me back to my child, to bring me back to that sort of very uh, emotional, vulnerable time where you're opening up to the world. You're looking, you're hunting, you're searching. Who am I? Where do I fit? And here with the young monks chanting, they're sort of finding their sort of identity within Buddhism. you can have a very deep connection with it. You can have a deep connection with, 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 with the light, with the sound, with the spiritualism, with the environment, with the monasteries, with the mountains, with the wind, with the rain. I mean, often I spend you know, days walking through the Himalayas with no shoes on. I think it's extremely eccentric, but I feel utterly connected with the ground, with the soil. And in that connection, you feel very, you feel very insignificant, but that insignificance sort of is empowering. You see the power of the world and the respect for the nature and the beauty of the Himalayas. I think there's nowhere else in the world that, uh, that touches me as this magnificent environment. And then I've sort of evolved in this sort of creative sort of urge, this obsession to carry this old camera around the world with me. But it's not about the photography. It's about that sort of that hunt, that focus, that sort of that alignment of feeling, of experience with the light, with the wind, with the snow, with the prayer flags, with the chanting of the monks together and it's it really it, it's for me it's, it's it's pure happiness it's pure happiness in what I experience and after sort of three weeks walking through the Malayas you, you feel your body again you become attuned and you become one <laughs>